Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to go over five trailer upgrades that I've done on this trailer. And I just kind of want to do an overview. And the trailer was pulled out when I did the rest of the video. but uh, And you can decide whether these are worthwhile trailer upgrades or a waste of money. And uh, I'll start with the first one, which is the priciest one. Sure. And it's the Waysafe receiver hitch. And you get all this stuff with it and this thing is thick i mean that thing is super thick and i think i can't remember what the rate waiting on the rate let's see twenty-two thousand pounds now well, can you see that that's uh there we go there we go that's pretty crazy and then the two inch is fifteen thousand pounds so you get a two inch ball and a two and five sixteenths inch ball which is cool because that pretty much covers most of the trailers you're going to have I even recently got a 5x8 that was pr pretty new. I think it was like four years old. And I thought I was going to need to get a uh, 1 and 7 eighths, but it also required a 2-inch ball. So I thought, that was great. I don't need to buy any extra balls. And uh, so the cool thing is, uh, I'll show you this in a minute, but it comes with a tongue uh, weight system so you can tell how much is on your tongue. Obviously, the you know the typical thing is you know 10 to 15%. Most people know that in the trailer, or at least hopefully you would know that if you trailer. And I'll I'll show you how it works if you'll watch it right now. All right, folks. So it kind of works like this. So if you want to put, say, your two and five eighths inch ball, you go. You just it doesn't require any locks. It just goes in there like that. Oops. Now you're gonna make sure that thing's lined up. Okay. So it just goes in there like this. Just fiddle until it goes. It's a flush. So you just slide it in here now. And then however you want to adjust it. This one's only a six inch adjust, I believe. Which is probably all I need. It's just basically going to be a one vehicle. And you can just adjust that. And it does go one way. It points to the rear. Uh, it will not it will not go all the way in. As you can see, it's just not going to work. So they square it away with these things, so that's locked, so no one can steal it, or no one without the same lock system. And then this, of course, also has its own locking system. Again, so no one can steal it, unless, of course, they have, oops, unless, unless of course, you're dumb and you can't do it, but that is square away. And then they have little covers for this, Keep it nice and clean and they have this cover too just keep it clean and it's ready to go and here's how it works So another worthwhile and worth your money upgrade for the trailer is this trailer jack. As you can see here, it I believe is aluminum if I'm not mistaken about that. And it has this little thing right here which is a drop down. So you basically pull this, do that, and then it drops down. And this one doesn't exactly fit in there perfectly. But as you can see, that takes a lot of cranking out of this if you can do that. So. Then you can just do that. I'll go to the first one. We do that. Tilt it just a little bit. And then, anyways, if I had two hands, you could see it better. But that thing is well worth it. If you wanted to, you could put a wheel on it. But this thing doesn't really turn well, anyways, because it's a, a tandem axle trailer. So, but I I thought that this was. I got tired of cranking the thing. Now you will crank it a little bit getting it you know the finite adjustments to it but as far as like you know most of its movement you can do with the drop and I'll make sure that's centered again but anyway you get the picture and it comes with that pin and it bolts right up there so it will probably attach to most trailers just fine so the next upgrade that I thought was 
well worth the money was this tongue toolbox from Harbor Freight. So of course, you know, naturally it's made in China, but this one has a nice locking mechanism on it. And they do have one that's cheaper. I think this was like 144 bucks. I think there's one for 114, but it's flimsy all the way around. The locking mechanism, the construction, it doesn't really fit on the trailer tongue very well. It fits further back, but it's it's not as tall. It's wider, but it's more narrow, and it's I don't know, it just looked like a piece of junk. So um, most of the time, my trailer sits back there in the carport. But you know, if I'm out traveling around, or if I just want to keep something secure, you know, and want it out of the weather, this is a great way to do it. And I you know generally keep the ratchet straps in there. They're as you can see highly organized, and I keep the the stake pockets d-rings in there too and i think there's a cargo net in there and uh so this just keeps that stuff secure and also out of the weather you know if i'm on the way to some place and it's raining then you know i just prefer to keep the stuff dry you know if the rat straps get wet when it's you know raining on the way back or something from picking something up or dropping something off that's fine whatever but in the meantime the stuff stays you know pretty clean pretty dry and secure so i would recommend this uh, for the money it was it was not too bad basically you just drill the holes in there um and you can see one of the holes right there pretty easy deal you know and it worked out pretty good for me it doesn't come with hardware i think you're going to provide your own hardware so just you know keep that in mind and uh i haven't had it for a terribly long time probably you know close to a year or something like that but it's held up pretty good so far so I kind of wanted to clarify, I said something about getting the smaller toolbox because it sat further back here. Because the other jack I had used to be right here. And I thought I wanted it back there because, you know, putting the tailgate down. Because if this is all the way up, you really can't put the tailgate down without running it into the tailgate. But because this is adjustable, you can have the whole trailer hooked up. And you can let that down when you want to put the tailgate down. And then when you put the tailgate back up and you're going to leave and go somewhere, you know, on with your travels. Uh, trailering then you can just raise this thing back up after the tailgates back up so it actually you know this uh, toolbox even though it goes a little bit over this hole this hole doesn't need to be used it's actually you can move it out here and it actually has the stabilizer right here where it goes through another part of the frame and it doesn't have that on this particular uh, one you don't have something to make the uh, jack uh, the trailer jack more stable so i thought that was pretty cool it the next ended up upgrade is the stake pockets with the d-ring stakes so these i got on amazon or online somewhere same thing with these i'll try to put the links in the in the description and then they came with some cheesy pin that wouldn't make it through since there's a little bit of play in here I just could not find the stake pockets that would fit, or the D-rings that would fit these stake pockets. So there's a little bit of play, but the ones, the uh, pins that came with these had, they didn't even have a hairpin cotter. They had a regular cotter pin, which I thought was crazy. So I found these pins at Home Depot for about five bucks. I think they're now $6, you know, inflation and all. And so the only drawback was I had to drill out just a hair as you can tell that one's that circle's a little bit bigger i could move it up but you know do the other ones but i don't know why they're pretty much i wish they were actually level actually are a little bit raised i think i wish they were down but anyways and then i had to drill the uh stay pockets too to fit those so they did come with a fair amount of work getting them bolted on here and you can make ones where you they're welded as well but I don't have a welder, so that's why these are bolted. And I put them there. One's over there. I have one over there, as you can see. And then I could not put one here because the, the metal piece, I think, for the wiring uh, is there. And then it runs up here. It does go away on my trailer right there. So, which is why I can put it right there, but not at the end. Not a big deal. I haven't used that one yet. I would like to put additional ones here and one over there in case I need to anchor something from the front. But I only have two of these for my for the big trailer. I have a, a bunch. I have four for the let's see, 
for the little trailer there because it does not have any tie downs, okay? Zero tie downs that it has. So on this trailer, I have one, two, three, and then four, and then same on the other side. Now, the reason why I put them here is sometimes I have an attachment that's that takes up too much space here, and I can't get a straight shot from here to the tie down point to the tractor. I'll try to slip in a video to show you. And it's because of this. So, on some other ones, I could probably show you, but this little bit touches over here. It's clear over there when the stump grinder's here. Now, I could move the tractor further back on the trailer, but I want to have, you know, the proper load distribution. So, this touches just a little bit, but that's enough that, you know, enough back and forth will, you know, fray that easily. It's done. As you can see, we get a wreck from one hook to the other hook without any rubbage. So it does also shorten the size of the straps you need. So, so that's why I put these in. And it's just anytime you can have additional contact points to tie something down on a, on a trailer, I think is a good idea. If you need to, I obviously you can see here, stake, stake pockets become extra useful on a trailer that has zero tie downs. So without these, I wouldn't have any way to tie it down other than to hook, you know, something around here, which is definitely not ideal. And you can do it, but it's just not ideal. So the fifth and final upgrade are these LED lights that I have on both sides. And of course I have the reflective tape there and here. Plus there's lights right here. And I think we even have a light up here. So it's pretty well lit up. You know, I think sometimes people confuse, you know, people try to judge their vehicles and don't really notice that there's trailers behind vehicles sometimes. So I think it's probably not a bad idea to try to make yourself as seen as possible. So this is probably an upgrade that most of you have already done to your trailers. These things are only about, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. And the LED lights I got for 25 bucks for the pair, they were on sale. And uh, the other one was kind of broken that I had. So, I mean, it, it all worked, but it was missing this piece because I, you know, at some point in time clipped it off. But anyways, not a super sexy uh, upgrade, but one that none, nonetheless will hopefully keep you from getting hit by people that aren't paying as much attention as maybe they should. So... That wraps up these trailer upgrades. Hopefully, you'll find that they were, you know, interesting or maybe worth it. Obviously, that way safe is pretty pricey, but it's also, I mean, a lot of people buy other fancy, you know, spend big money on other fancy hitches, and that one actually has the feature of telling you how much is on the tongue weight. So that's, I thought that was pretty cool. Anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like it, on one of my three Fords, or all of them, you can hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.